The Ford Lightnings are being recalled for fires. Watch this. Holy Jesus! Oh, Jesus! Battery operated trucks! <laughs> so, yeah, battery operated trucks. Uh, obviously, it's not every one of them that's catching on fire, but I certainly wouldn't want this in my garage, would you? So what is this new recall on the Ford Lightning? The description of the recall says the affected vehicles could experience an internal short circuit in the high voltage battery after repeated charge and discharge cycles. They say Ford's team reviewed supplier process and maintenance records to determine the population of affected parts. Ford process is capable of tracing high voltage battery array production to the vehicle in which the array is installed. The recalled vehicles may be equipped with a high voltage battery array with suspect cells. They say due to the production process deviations at the supplier, the electrodes in the high voltage battery cells may be misaligned. Over repeated charge and discharge cycles, this misalignment can eventually lead to an internal short circuit. There are no warning lights or indicators associated with this concern. There may be smoke or heat in the high voltage battery pack, which could melt or damage the battery pack or other vehicle components. So this is an interesting problem with the Ford Lightning. About a thousand vehicles are affected, but I can tell you right now, just given their description of this, I would not be looking at a 2022 through 2024, a used one of these, even if it's a good deal. Um, unless you park this outside away from your house, I would not want this thing parked in my garage. That's for sure. I just had a family member that uh, ended up having a house fire, not because of an EV, uh, but it just kind of re aligned my thinking and I started to think about all the things in the house that could potentially start a house fire. And boy, just adding something in there where a vehicle is supposed to be off in the garage and just the fact that there could just be an internal short circuit, it could just ignite and light on fire at any time. And, and Ford's not the only one. We've seen Mercedes, um, even Tesla's other brands have this same problem. And it sure makes you think, you know, at least my gasoline car, once it's off, in the garage, I know I know it's off. Uh, if there's no hybrid, no other battery systems in there, it's pretty unlikely that you're going to have a fire. Here is the list of the high voltage battery array part numbers. There's a component description and then component part numbers here. Uh, there are three listed here. I'll post this a link in the description for you if you've got one of these. Maybe you can identify these part numbers. I'm not sure how exposed they are in the Lightning. Uh, if you can see these part numbers from below or maybe uh, through just removing some panels, maybe you could identify if, if yours is affected with these involved components. Ford does say that owners will be notified by mail and instructed to take your vehicle to the dealer. They'll inspect your serial numbers and determine if you need repairs replacement of the battery arrays. I wonder if they're going to replace the entire thing or just parts of the battery. That'll be interesting. Not sure I would trust it after that. They do also say uh, limit your charging, uh, the high voltage charging. Don't go over 80% state of charge until you get this inspected by Ford. This is coming at uh, not a very good time for Ford. This is coming in from Electric. They say the F-150 Lightning sales dropped again in February of 2025. U.S. sales dropped by 9% last month. Although electric vehicles, including EVs, hybrids, and hybrids, both notched double-digit growth, sales of Ford's gas-powered ICE models, which accounted for over 85% of deliveries, fell nearly 13%. Hybrids saw higher demand with sales up 27.5% to 15,357, while EV sales increased 15% to 7,326. The reason why EVs are increasing is mostly because of the incentives. It's one of the only vehicles you can get 0% on. I do see some guys in the Facebook groups talking about these insane deals. They get like $16,000, $18,000 off these Ford Lightnings. Um, it's because there's so many of them on the lot and they're just not selling as many and they need to incentivize them to get rid of them. But despite the other electrics doing okay and the hybrids doing okay for Ford, they say Ford's electric pickup, the F-150 Lightning, sales were down nearly 15% last month with only 2,199 units sold. Through March, Ford has sold 15% fewer Lightning models than it did the same time last year. So 2025 not shaping up to be as good as 2024 for Lightning sales, and that is with pretty good incentives. 
Uh, I think this is going to get worse with uh, what's going on in the EPA and the government and probably going to be fewer incentives. It's it's going to be a struggle for the lightning. It's interesting. Uh, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. They think that the reason why the Lightning sales are slipping is because the Rivian and the Lightning aren't the only players now. They think it's because there's like the Cybertruck, the Silverado EV, and the GMC Sierra EV. I really don't think that's why sales are slipping. I, I think it's because the EV thing is kind of playing out. Like it was a cool new thing. All the people that would want an EV and, and bought EVs recently, they kind of, they tried them out. They started to figure out the charge infrastructure for some of these brands not named Tesla is a little bit more difficult to deal with. Sure, they can use Tesla chargers now, but uh, it's just not its not as good of an experience as, say, filling up like a gas-powered vehicle and being able to go five or 600 miles on a charge and then being able to fill up in you know 10 minutes or less and go another five or 600 miles. So it's just a different experience. And I think when you're trying to sell a truck like this that you know, it's usually going to be like, I want to tow my camper or my boat or whatever. I want to go on a trip with it. The trips become longer. It's just a little bit more of a hassle. Some people are okay with that, uh, but it does, it's just more of an inconvenience. And I think that, uh, I don't know, I think the EV thing is just kind of playing out and going to, going to kind of level out here. I do think there's a, a purpose for them and commuting and like local stuff. They're pretty nice, but um, in a truck, eh, I just don't think it's, I just don't think it's there yet. And the depreciation on the Lightning, it's it's not great, obviously. It's about 16% on the 2023 and 19.7% on the 2022. Uh, obviously, EVs, it doesn't matter what EV you're buying. You're going to get massive depreciation in the first two to three years. That's just how they go. They're usually around 40 to 50% depreciation. Uh, this isn't quite as bad on this Car Guru's index. On the flip side of that, there's such big deals on the front end of these that sometimes your depreciation might be about the same as a normal truck on a Lightning, because if you're getting like $19,000 off up front, then your depreciation might be huge after two to three years, but you got so much off on the front end, maybe more than you would on a gas or a hybrid model, that it's probably gonna even out after two to three years. I still, I still think they're going to depreciate more over time. You do see EVs, once they get up around that 100,000 mile range, anywhere approaching battery warranty or any other warranty ending, uh, boy, they tend to really crater compared to gas counterparts. I will say, I just wanna leave you with this image uh, of a, this is a house fire with an EV inside. It's one of the Mercedes house fires. Uh, this, this does happen. It's not all the time. It's not to strike fear in you, but if you have one of these cars, one of these Mercedes or, or a Tesla or any of these EVs, I was parking mine in the garage till I sold it. And it does make you think, man, if, if anything happens to any of those, those cell packs, if you have a, a short circuit anywhere and, and just a situation that causes a fire, it's really hard to get them out because the drive system's connected to that battery. Once it starts on fire, what they generally have to do is grab onto these and yank them out with trucks and get them out of the house to try to save the house. So just something to think about. If you've got one, I, I would definitely park it outside. I, I know a lot of my neighbors do. I see them parking Teslas outside. They just don't, they don't trust them. They still like them, but they don't want to have them in their garage. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Till next time.